Okay, in the last part of chapter four, we're gonna talk about two processes called endocytosis and phagocytosis. These are uh, basically ways to move things across the membrane that don't involve diffusion or transmembrane proteins. So this is how we move really big stuff into and out of a cell. Uh, we'll talk about how pathogens can actually take advantage of this to hide inside of our cells. So we have a problem, right? We have a really big molecule that's not gonna fit through a tiny transmembrane protein, but we still need to get this molecule into our cell. How do we do that? We use a process called endocytosis. Endo means within, cytosis means to bring into the cytoplasm. So bringing within the cytoplasm. And the solution is you just bend the membrane, right? They're really flexible. You just kind of pinch off a little bit of membrane. That's what the process of endocytosis is. So we have these big blue molecules here and we want to get them inside the cell. Well, they attach to the surface and we bud the membrane into a little uh, hollow space that we call a vesicle that will bring big things inside of our cell. Here's an electron micrograph of it actually happening. This is a cell membrane. It's budding and bringing things in in vesicles. So this is how you get big things in. Let's go ahead and watch an animation of this. Endocytosis is a process by which a cell takes up objects, such as food particles or bacteria, that are too large for membrane transport. Endocytosis is performed by human cells and by eukaryotic microbes, such as amoebas. For endocytosis, a portion of the membrane rearranges by invagination, bending and folding inward to form a pocket. The pocket contains a region of membrane in which cell surface proteins have bound to the food particles. The pocket closes in to form a small hollow sphere called an endocytic vesicle, or endosome. The membrane lipids rearrange, allowing the endosome to separate from the original membrane. The particles enclosed by the endosome are now trapped within the cell. So endocytosis can be used to bring lots of things in. Um, there is a specialized type of endocytosis that we call phagocytosis. So phago means to eat. So this is cellular eating. And this is what some eukaryotic parasites like amoebas do to actually bring in their food. And their food could be things like bacteria. Um, so uh, they can bring things in and digest it in there. We also have what we call human macrophages. Those are a type of immune cell. They can engulf pathogenic microbes and bring them in for digestion by what we call the lysosome. Lysis means to break. So once it brings in the pathogen, it combines it with a lysosome, which has all kinds of like uh, acidic chemicals and things like that in it and will destroy the pathogen in there. So this process is important for some organisms to eat, but also for our immune system to destroy bacteria and things that come into our cells. And you can see here an actual uh, example of phagocytosis occurring. This is our immune cell and this is our pathogenic bacteria it starts to cause that invagination and then it engulfs it into this little vesicle. That vesicle goes and binds with a uh, lysosome. The lysosome starts breaking down that bacteria. It's got all kinds of toxic chemicals in it. So this is literally how we fight infections. So we have a case history here that involves this process. Uh, in October 2013, Kelsey Programmer, uh, 28, um, works for a prominent tech firm in Silicon Valley. So um, no obvious risk factors here, right? In the middle of the night, she wakes up. Severe abdominal cramps, diarrhea, fever, and a really bad headache. Um, after about three days, the fever subsides, but the diarrhea continues. And this is bad. This is 20 times a day. So that's basically every hour. Uh, and it starts to show blood after a while. So that's not good. Um, she's admitted to the hospital, obviously, and given IV fluids to help her with her dehydration. Uh, we've seen this before, right? We've seen osmosis and things like that. Um, the physician is going to ask her the questions, right? 
the gastrointestinal side makes us think food. So the physician's going to ask about what she's been eating um, and, uh, you know, when the symptoms came on. She says that she ate a rotisserie chicken cooked at the supermarket the night before her symptoms started. So they're going to do an antibody test and they suspect that this is Salmonella enterica. Um, there's a special strain of it here that is very nasty. Um, so they do an antibody test, right? And it glows yellow here. That means that it's present. Because of the severity of the symptoms, she's treated with antibiotics and given that rehydration therapy that we talked about with the cholera example. There were over 400 cases in 23 states uh, traced back to contaminated chicken from one farm. Um, she recovered, but even three months later, we can still detect this strain of salmonella in her feces. So it's still there. How can it survive three months post illness, post antibiotic treatment? How is it still there? Anybody got any ideas? Think about that. Pause the video. Let's come back to this image here. The bacteria, this dark bit, is hiding inside of little vesicles inside of an intestinal cell here. The pathogen has got itself inside of our cells by tricking them. It's causing the cells to do phagocytosis, that's cellular eating, but it stops the process midway. And now it's got a little home in here, right? It's brought it in, but it never got digested. It never got broken down. So now the bacteria can live inside here. And antibiotics, they can't get through all these membranes. They're too big. Uh, so they can't attack the bacteria inside the cell. This is what we call pathogenesis. It's a mechanism of pathogenesis. This is how a bacteria can cause disease and stay inside of us. So salmonella is a particularly nasty one because it can do this hiding phenomenon here by using phagocytosis. Okay, that's it for chapter four. We've talked a lot about um, chemistry, obviously, and some chemical principles that are important for cell biology. So we talked about the membrane, which is what defines the cell and some properties of the cell. The next section in chapter five is going to talk all about cell biology. So not just the membrane, but what's inside the cell and, and what it does. So remember for this endocytosis, that's budding of the membrane that can bring in large particles um, into vesicles. Uh, phagocytosis is uptake of even larger stuff, um, including bacteria or pathogens. Uh, usually that fuses with a lysosome uh, to kind of acidify that and destroy it. But as we saw in the salmonella example, it doesn't always uh, get rid of it. Okay, I just want to finish with a reminder that this cholera example is super critical. I'm going to ask you questions about it on the test. So please make sure you understand this. If you're, if you're unsure, send me an email and ask some questions about it. All right, that is it for Chapter 4. Have a great day.